Hi everyone, good morning. It's Marcy Denning here from Stampin' with Marcy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada. Uh, welcome to my Monday morning mojo. Um, I hope you've had a good Monday morning so far. I hope you had a fabulous weekend. Um, whatever it was you did, I hope that um, it was enjoyable and that you are ready to conquer the week. Um, I was on for just a second a few moments ago and my internet cut out again. I don't know what's going on. We have a temporary line. So fingers crossed everything is going to work today. Um, yes, so um, I'm going to flip you around and we are going to get started. Please say hello when you join me. Um, even if it's the replay, please say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. And if you're watching on YouTube, please click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos from me. So let's um, flip you around. Today we are going to be creating with the Darling Donkeys. I have a super fun card for you. Um, nothing too fancy. It is Monday morning after all, and we do need a little bit of time to get our mojo going sometimes. So let's see here what is happening. Okay. You're good. You are not what's showing on my there we go all right good morning Jeannie thank you for sharing um, yes I am feeling better um, I have been a migraine sufferer for oh as long as I can remember basically um, I think teenager is when um, I started having my first migraines um, I know my aunt on my mother's side and my grandmother on my father's side were migraine sufferers. So, um, yeah, it came on and wiped me out for a couple days. So I'm just adjusting everything here. All right. So are we good? Are we going to stay? Okay, so let's bring you up here on my iPad. Um, have you guys been enjoying the um, new mini catalog and the, um, oh, come on, the uh, celebration brochure? Have you placed any orders yet? What is your favorite? favorite um, celebration item so far I say so far because you know as you are playing with things getting those items for free um, you may be um, changing your mind all right so I've brought you up on my iPad hello Sue hello Carol all right so um, right now the darling donkeys is my favorite i think you might be a little too low you're not we're not getting the whole um let me just adjust slightly all right now you can see a bit better of my desktop okay so right now I am loving these uh, donkeys. Hello, Lynn. Thanks for joining. I am loving these donkeys. They are so fun, and I am a critter person. I love all stamp sets that um, include cute little critters. So I have paired my um, this stamp set up with another celebration. So this item here can be earned for free with a uh, qualifying $60 order. So I have paired it with the 
flower and field designer series paper. This is a 12 by 12 pack. Um, so, um, lots of paper in here, easy to cut down, fabulous prints. I showed you them during a, uh, unboxing live a little while ago. Jeannie says for Christmas, your, her husband had a couple of the grid sheets plasticized. Oh my goodness. That is fabulous. So you can just wipe them off. That is a great gift. Very clever and thoughtful of your husband. Okay, so, and then we are also, um, this is the many mess, the message dies that coordinates, I had to look, coordinates with the many messages. This is available as a bundle where the stamp set is all one solid image that has all of the sentiments. It's a sentiment stamp set and we all need sentiments. I am loving this die though. Um, I am cutting out just the ones that I need. You can cut all of them at the same time so you have an entire sheet of all of these fabulous uh, label dies ready to go. Or you can, um, what I've been doing is just taking a little scrap piece of paper. You know how I always tell you don't throw away your scraps. Using just like, I keep pointing to this one because this is the one that I used, I'm using this morning. Um, I've been just taking scraps and placing them under the area that I want to uh, die cut out and um, getting that perfect die right that way. We also have a star, a little, I would say that's a flower more. Could be a star, heart, that's a star for sure. Maybe they're all stars. Yes, they are stars. It shows rounded, we'll see when I cut them all out. But yeah, super, super cute. Love this die set. Okay, so this is the card we're going to be creating. I'm calling, this is Hubert. He is so adorable. Sometimes I name my critters, yes, I do. Um, when I start playing with them, if a name just pops into my head, that's what this critter is gonna be called. And this just, Hubert, he's a dashing young man and he's got a little flower for his bow. <laughs> so, um, and here you can see the die with the Hey There Friend, um, this fabulous designer series paper. My color is Bumblebee, the thick basic white and basic black. And then I am using a little bit of the braided linen trim. I'm almost out of this. I'm going to have to my next order remember to add a pack of a roll of this on so and I am using the fabulous one of the fabulous new blending brushes and I have actually created a mask to um, cover as you can see masking is so easy and so fun to do that it just adds that little bit of halo color around your stamped image um, without giving Hubert some blue teeth. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so let's get started here. Okay, so my um, colors are the Tuxedo Black Memento ink pad. Now, I store this like this upside down so that my um, ink pad is upside down so that the ink settles to the top of the pad when I go to ink it up. Um, it's right there at the top of that felt um, pad there. Otherwise, the ink settles down. These pads are designed differently, whereas the ink pad in the case is already upside down, so your ink is at the top. So um, that's just a handy little tip there for you. Okay, so, and my colors are, I took right from my um, designer series paper here. I am using Poppy Parade and Granny Apple Green. And then Hubert is colored with the light crumb cake, dark crumb cake, and then I colored his hooves with the uh, ivory. And then of course his ears 
and he's got just a touch of a rosy cheek and that is with the light petal pink. All right, so we are going to start by, I've got this piece of design of um, thick basic white. So, oh, I didn't open it up to show you that we also have a cutie pie inside. So sweet. I love these donkeys. I had a customer who had uh, contacted me to um, place an order and for her free celebration, she was not fussy on these donkeys. So I'm going to make it my goal to keep showing her some fun um, projects with these donkeys to change her mind. All right, so I am just inking this up. Now, my blog post will be live about 30-ish minutes after. I'm just looking to make sure I don't have any fuzzies on there um, with all of the measurements so that you could easily recreate this at home yourself. Okay, so I'm going to go right in the center. Right like that, giving it a moment for that ink to transfer. Okay, so he is done. Okay, then I have another piece for the inside of my card, so let's do that as well with the cute little um, sitting donkey. So, okay, get the lid on for the moment because I'm sure I would put my hand in it. So I have another piece of grid paper here and I'm just going to make sure it's fairly straight and bring this cutie into the corner. There we go. Get them out of the way. And then we're going to bring in, we're going to do all our stamping at once. So we're going to bring in our little label and our little hey there friend and get that really inked up well because when you're inking when you're stamping on colored cardstock you do need to make sure that it is well inked because it doesn't show up quite as well as on white cardstock as you know so we're just going to stamp right in the center, giving it maybe a, a moment longer to um, really transfer that ink. Okay, good enough for me. Move that off to the side. Okay, so while we're giving this just a moment longer to um, for that ink to dry let's take and fold and burnish our base now my base is basic black and it is cut at four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half just a basic fold nothing fancy about that and then my um, cardstock in my designer series paper, so the opposite side is this fun polka dot pattern, is um, um, an eighth of an inch smaller. So this is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. This is four by five and a quarter. So when you're um, cutting your layers, you're just going down an eighth of an inch each to um, create those. If you're wanting just a little bit, you can go to the 16th. I have done that before, 16th of an inch smaller. Um, just for that little hair of a border around it. And I like to use my liquid glue for things like this because it gives me that moment longer to adjust in case I haven't um, quite got this um, glued on 
properly if I'm over to one side or another too much. The liquid glue gives me manipulation time. All right, so this, because the flowers are directional, you wanna make sure when you are placing it on your base that you do have it with the flowers up, pointing up, not pointing towards the ground. Okay, I think that looks good. Hello, Beth, thanks for joining this morning. Okay, so now we are going to just move that out of the way. We're gonna start and color Hubert first. Okay, so I am going to take my Granny Apple Green Light and very carefully, because we don't want him to have green teeth. I'm coloring that and then I'm gonna come in with my dark and just add a bit there. And I'm just gonna leave it as is. All right, so next we're gonna come in with our Light Poppy Parade. And do the same. And then come in with the dark and add just a titch. All right, so then let's do Hubert's hooves here. So nothing fancy about this. Our Stampin' Blends make it so that you have success every time because they're so easy to use. All right, so now let's give Hubert some, a um, little bit of rosy cheeks right there. And we're going to color in the ears. And that is, actually let's go just a thin line there and there on his lips. Okay, so now light crumb cake. We are going to very carefully go over that area. And I can't look for comments when I'm coloring unless I want to color all over my um, cardstock because I can't color inside the lines and look for comments. So I'll look after. I'm just adding a, just a smidge of the dark there, just a titch. And then just coming over to blend that out. Okay, so now I like to go with my light first. Some people do dark first. It is whatever you want to do. There are no rules in my world when you are coloring in. And by going over that area where you have added that pink, you're just gently blending it out. I like the petal pink because I find it's just a little bit more subtle than the uh, flirty flamingo. For me anyway, you can color yours with whatever colors you choose. Could even not have any rosy cheeks. Okay, so he's got some 
straight on dark hair there and I'm going to add a little bit of dark there and here on this side of his face and then come back I put my lids back on right away it's just a habit that I have always done to keep myself from getting into trouble by forgetting to put the lid on. Okay, so there his face. Oh, actually, I should. My dark crumb cake obviously doesn't get used that often because the lid is very difficult to get off this morning. Or it could be the moisturizer on my hands. <laughs> So just by, by going over and blending that out, it gets rid of that harsh line. Cindy, yes, the donkeys are so cute. Good morning, Monica. Thanks for joining. All right, so now we're going to quickly, avoiding the stem, Color in the body. And come down on those legs. He's got very skinny legs with knobby knees. And the tail. All right, so now let's bring in our dark. So we're going to have a bit of dark here along the side of his face and around here with that little bit of a tuft. And then there. So just add your bit of dark wherever you wherever you want, really. And under the chin. And I'm just kinda, a little bit of a dotting there. I'm not adding too awful much. Just here and there. Cause I want him to be kind of light. I don't want him to be too awful dark. So, so let's bring that up so that you can see. So I've just added little bits here and there. Like I said, you can go as heavy or as light as you want when you're coloring your donkeys. It's your creation. So do what appeals to you. That way you're going to be happy with the way it looks. In this area here, because it is so skinny, you don't wanna saturate it and have it really bleed out. So you have to be a little more delicate when coloring those areas. Okay. And I've left this area right here in the center. Now this will dry a bit more. I've left this area right here a little lighter so that it's kind of like a light patch on him. Um, so now let's come in here and color his friend. All right, so we're doing 
the same thing. Some rosy cheeks and maybe a little bit around those lips. And come in with our light. Whenever you add another color, it changes that color. So it does give that tiny bit of definition to that area. All right. I'm trying to color as quickly as possible because watching somebody color is not always the most exciting thing to do. Okay, so bring in our dark. That little tuft of hair had some darkness to it. A little darkness there. Blend that out just ever so slightly. Okay. And we are done there. So we have a cute inside and outside of our card. So now let's take, actually move this off. Let's take our mask and all my mask is, is it is stamped. My image is stamped on a post-it note and um, and then fussy cut out and the tail is because I went so skinny with the tail um, I'll have to be careful but it just you cut it very close to that line of the image you don't want to go outside the line of an the image like if you are fussy cutting a stamped image out that you are actually using because that was go that will give you a halo around and you don't want that so you're just going to, I've got my blending brush here. Let's just move this over slightly. Um, I'm just in a circular motion, picking up the ink off of the ink pad. And then I'm just getting rid of some of that on my uh, grid paper. And then I'm going to just come in here and very lightly, now the tail, it's okay. If it moves around a smidge because it's a dark, so the color, so the um, blue is not going to affect the color of, it's not gonna change the color because Pool Party is such a light blue. So you can go as heavy or as light, and I'm turning my work here. Maybe add just a smidge more. And I'm starting on top of my mask and bringing it out. And I'm just doing gentle circular motions. Uh, good morning, Claire. Looking awesome. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, so whoops. Get back down there. All right, so we can take this off. And you can see that it doesn't really look like I've done anything. However, if I pull the mask off, 
Can you see how it is now? He's got that blue hue around him. So if I hold this up, you can see the color difference with the uh, white cardstock right beside it. So it's just ever so faint, but it really, I think, makes them pop off of the um, page. But I think I want a little bit more down here. So with the mask, it's easy to do. We just pop that mask right back on. So any image that you have at all, it's easy to create a mask. You just have to fussy cut around it. But you do have to remember that you have to give it time for the ink to dry on that um, uh, post-it or whatever it is because the uh, fibers of that paper are a little different and the ink sits on top of it a little longer I have found so it does take a while to dry so when you're doing a mask just be aware of that that you need to give it just a few more moments um, to dry and that ink to really set so I would suggest if you're doing a mask to um, Stamp it well ahead of time and set it aside to dry and then come in when you're ready to stamp and do whatever it is your project you're doing, masking for, then come in and do it. And then I keep these masks inside the box, the container. So there, that's a little darker. I keep my mask because I've already created it, so why would I throw it away? So I just, see I've got a mask here for another one of the donkeys. Um, so I just keep them inside of my stamp case so I know where they are all the time. So now he has got that nice um, halo, that blue behind him. I didn't do it with this donkey on the inside because eh, we could always just give it just a light because I haven't re-inked this. And there's no white areas on him. So I don't know if that did anything or not, but there you go. And then you just rub it until you see that there's no more ink coming off. Um, to reuse it or you can use uh, warm water um, I have gentle gentle uh, dish liquid um, put the bit of dish liquid in my hand got this wet rubbed it in my hand and then gently worked it through those fibers and then really rinsed it well and then I had it sitting up like this to dry um, if you're going to be using multiple colors. Um, I'm going to have enough that I've got one for my uh, blues, one for my uh, pinks, one for my um, greens type of thing. So that way they're not getting um, messed up in that. It's all in the same color family. All right, so let's bring in our other things here so we need to adhere and like I said this is just an eighth of an inch larger to get that nice little border Okay, so here we have, he is ready to go. No, uh, Cindy, Stampin' Up! does not sell masking material. So I just, literally, I just use a post-it note um, and position my stamped image as close to that top of the post-it note where the uh, adhesive is for um, masking. I don't think you need to get any fancy, um, special, expensive 
masking products. If you've got a post-it note pack in your junk drawer or whatever, then just use that. That's all I use. Okay, so we're just going to stick that on the inside. Now, because there is no sentiment on the inside, this could be anything. This could be a birthday card. This could be a thinking of you card, just a hello card, whatever um, you are in need of. All right, so I am to the end of my dimensionals on this sheet. So... I'm just, and then there's one right here for the center. And, okay. So, because I'm going to have my Hey There Friend is down there, so I want to bring this up towards the center top of my card front. And then before I give it a press, I always lift it up when I'm doing a video to make sure that we are down straight. And then just give that a little press now that I know we are good and straight. So then for doing my... Um, my um, twine behind there. I always add my seal, stamp and seal, before it was my snail. Um, I add just across the back. Let's go one more here. So that it gives my um, ribbon, my twine, my thread, whatever it is I'm using, it gives it something to um, stick to so I know I want it's got to go this way so that it's opposite so I'm going to take it's still attached to the spool so I'm going to take it and I'm going to lay it across because this is the way I want it to um, be on the card front so I'm going to unspool a bit now I'm going to take it and I'm going to give it a little loop there and then sticking to my hands I'm going to loop it back and by doing it this way it gives you when you've got your um, adhesive down there it gives you time and the ability to manipulate it and take your hands off so it's not like unraveling. So then we can see, hey, that looks good. So, except I just want to bring you more to the center. So we are going to do that because I want that loop, that's that tail to come right through the edge the center of that. So there we go, snip that off. I have zero waste that way. Easy peasy, I love easy peasy. So because I've got my adhesive here and here, um, this is going to um, sit like this. So I know that this top corner, don't put a, um, dimensional on that um, so I just need to have a dimensional here so oh that's not snipped so we are just going to put my dimensional across there so that's going to ha help that um, yes this is added bulk but I'm okay with that um, and then even though that there is a bit of um, the stamp and seal there. I'm still going to add just a titch 
of my liquid glue to attach that so that I'm gonna bump that up so till I can feel that I've hit the corner with that dimensional and I'm gonna give it a press. Hold it there for a moment so that the adhesive has a second to um, grab. And there we have it. A super adorable card, ready to be popped in the mail, ready to have some kind of a sentiment put on it and um, sent out to somebody who would uh, need a little bit of a hello um, in the mail. And then we've opened it up and that adorable little guy is there as well. Now you can also stamp, let me open my drawer. We can also stamp a, um, a donkey, one of these cuties. Let's open up an envelope and let's grab a piece of um, my printer. You can see I've been playing. So if you wanted to stamp on the bottom corner, so let's move this aside. So if you lo are loving this and you want to give even the mail carrier a little bit of a um, smile as they are um, handling your um, envelope, we can do this right in the corner. So there's our cutie. And because I've got this tucked in, let's actually You can leave it like that, or if we double this up and shove that in there to protect so it's not gonna go right through. And then we can very lightly without, um, we're not gonna do any blending. We're just going to, we'll do Ah, you need some rosiness there. I can't help myself. Then we're going to just really quickly, and it doesn't have to be all colored in. You could leave a little bit of white here and there. So, And hopefully I am not applying too much of the Stampin' Blends to go through to the other side. I'm trying to be feather light with my coloring. Now, whoever is going to be getting this, handling this, won't they be like, and look at that, we are not through because we protected it, but now we have a matching envelope. No, no bling, Jeannie, no bling today. So um, yeah, so you can even have an adorable matching envelope. Just always remember to shove something inside so that it um, protects the other side of the envelope because it will bleed through because this is even thinner paper than your um, cardstock. All right, so remember these items here, the designer series paper and the Darling Donkeys can be um, earned for free uh, with a qualifying order um, placed in my online store. Um, that's the blog address where you would go. Just click the Shop Now button at the top of the page and uh, use this month's host code for um, placing an order with me if your order is uh, under $200.
So that is all for me today. Um, this will be up um, in about half an hour on my blog so that you can get all the measurements. And I will see you on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Have a fabulous day, everybody. And I will uh, see you later. Bye for now.